Hey guys, welcome to another stud to dud behind the scenes video. And if you've been following the series, you know that we are in pursuit of three 90s convertibles. We're gonna do a series to find out who built the best in the 90s. Was it Japanese, was it Germans, or was it Americans? And Case, what happened last time we got together and looked at that red vehicle? We went and looked at a Corvette, yep. and it was not the Corvette for us, to put it lightly. Uh, it's been surprisingly difficult to find the absolutely perfect American convertible for us, but this one is also red like the Corvette we looked at, so it might be the car for us. Yeah, we've got a budget of $10,000, so we can't exceed that. Uh, yeah. So it's been tricky. So today we're going to go look at one of my least favorite <laughs> Mustangs. <laughs> yeah, we're looking at a 97 Mustang convertible, which is about as grandma spec as it gets. Yeah. But on the way there to go look at it, we're also going to see how this Mitsubishi Outlander is, do a little combination. Yeah, this is our steed for the day. It's the brand new Mitsubishi SEL Outlander. This is essentially a Nissan Rogue, right? Yep, they partnered with Nissan uh, and the Rogue. Uh, this one is 37995 so okay. 38000 38. Uh, and it also has a distinction case, let me show you, of this, and that is being the smallest vehicle you can buy with a third row. Yeah, and we're going to so see what it's like to yeah, be yeah, can in you get, the smallest third row. Yeah, can you get back here? Uh, maybe. <laughs> this is... Maybe if I didn't have any legs. <laughs> Hold on. All right. Okay. All right. And this is supposed to then go back? Oh, man. Um, oh, yeah. Well, so if you set up the second row like a church pew, just straight up and down, um, I almost kind of fit. I mean, my knees are against it, so is my head. But the question is, can I fit in the second row? Let me try. Uh, yeah, give it a shot. <laughs> Let me try the second row here. Howdy, folks. I am here with this star of Northern Lightning, our Ford F-150 Lightning, and I have other stars, and all of which you're going to be able to meet at the Overland Expo, including me. Yeah, that's right. We're going to be hanging out between 2 and 3 on Friday at the Overland Expo to meet and greet you guys. But there's somebody else who's going to be there as well. That's right. Um, it's going to be in Loveland, Colorado, 26th and 27th of August, 2 to 3 p.m. in the afternoon. Come by and see us. Where are we at, Andre? We're at the Four Wheel Camper booth. And guess what, guys? We've got some stickers to give away. Nice. <laughs> yeah, I mean the seat is sitting up against the top of my feet, so it can't really come back any further. <laughs> so I sit behind myself, so this is definitely a third row for the kiddos, not for the adults. <laughs> yeah, it's a three row as sort of a technicality. I mean, look at this diamond stitching over here. Man. Look at this, how beautiful that is. Isn't that cool? Yeah, there's actually a fair number of nice soft touch materials. I mean, also a fair amount of pretty cost cut plastic, but where it counts on a lot of your touch points, some pretty nice stuff. Look, you get a screen oh, in you get a, a shade. $38,000 uh, family compact crossover. Yeah. Uh, so what makes this different from a Rogue is uh, that it has a different power plant. This comes with a 2.5 liter uh, four cylinder uh, made into a CVT. Yeah. Uh, but it puts out 180 horsepower. Yeah, and it's also all-wheel drive, which is nice to have out here in Colorado because it's almost the end of summer. Yeah, so shall we uh, jump in and go look at that Mustang? Let's do it. All right, let's go do it. So I really like this interior case. I mean, I think, you know, they've done a really good job with this. Um, you feel like you're in a much more expensive car. And, you know, you said there were some hard plastics. There are, but for the most part, like everything you see and touch uh, feels really quality. And, of course, you've got different drive modes here. Uh, but, you know, we don't really care about the drive modes today because we're just... Yeah. Uh, we're not going off-road or anything. We're not going off-road. Uh, but I think, you know, for $38,000, you get a lot of value. And, of course, the Rogue is new, so now um, the Outlander is new. And I think this partnership makes a lot of sense for Mitsubishi because uh, they get a lot of Nissan technology, uh, and they can sell it and package it at a fairly reasonable price. Yeah, and like you say, there is a lot to like about this interior. I mean, a lot of unbelievably soft touch i mean some you know, fair number of cars now are using a lot of soft touch but this is the softest of soft touch you also have a nice looking digital instrument cluster there that's a pretty sharp feature yeah it's good i like the steering wheel i'm actually impressed with this car um you know as far as a family hauling car goes it's got a lot of creature comforts it's got a lot of cool stuff like look heated seats heated steering wheel dual zone climate control uh, i think there's a lot of value and even a giant sunroof yeah. which i can open up there we go to show you yeah i would say this qualifies as a 
almost full length moon roof when it goes all the way back. Yeah, look at that. That's pretty nice. All right, so so let's talk about this Mustang. I originally wanted to get a Corvette, but it seems like everybody who owns a Corvette uh, feels like uh, their Corvette is the most special one in the world, apparently. Yeah. So all the owners I'm getting are just not very reasonable, you know, price-wise. According to KBB.com, um, 90s Corvette, a C4, right, should be in the seven to $10,000 range, uh, with the convertible being maybe just a tad, a little bit more expensive, but not much more, right? But, yeah. But all the people I'm talking to are, this is my baby, it's never seen rain, yada, 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 and I want $15,000 for it. Yeah, which doesn't make a lot of sense considering that the economy is not necessarily heading in a good direction, the car market is going downhill, and fuel prices are extremely expensive, so it's not really the time to be buying a Corvette. Well, especially in Colorado with Labor Day just around the corner. Yeah. Right? Not a lot of people are going to be looking for a drop-top rear-wheel drive performance car when the <laughs> exactly. snow starts falling. So uh, I, I found this uh, Mustang on uh, Facebook Marketplace. Uh, it's only got 76,000 miles on it, which is a good number. Uh, the owner's asking for nine and a half. Uh, I KBB'd it. KBB says the car's worth about seven to seven and a half thousand. Right. Once again, we, we're in a really weird market right now where things are kind of topsy-turvy. So the used car market is definitely going down, but I don't think that the message has yet gotten out to the owners of used cars, right? So they're still yeah. asking like, let's say anywhere from 20 to 50% above the current market value. So if this guy's willing to lower the price, uh, you know, it might be worth actually getting. So you want to talk about that 97 Mustang? It didn't have the Coyote, it did it. No, it had a 4.6, which is a really common engine. You'll find it in Crown Vicks, so it's not hard to find parts for. Uh, but it's also not exactly a powerhouse. No. I mean, it's not a... Just over 200 horsepower. Yeah, it's nothing spectacular. Um, so we are potentially looking into spending some of our budget on beefing up that motor a little bit. Well, we found uh, a turbocharger for it, a twin <laughs> turbocharger. Yeah, we that, found a $1,500 twin turbo kit that claims a 1,000 horsepower which is, output. Which is eight, 800 more than, than, <laughs> than came from the factory, which is pretty incredible. Yeah. So if we could get it for like, let's say, I don't know, he's asking nine and a half, we can get it for seven and a half, which I don't think is realistic. Then you could potentially buy that $1,500 twin turbo kit and, and see how long it takes to throw a rod. <laughs> well, that 4.6 liter was also in the F-150, I believe, so <laughs> yeah, it was a truck engine. Uh, and this one has a stick shift, so it's the manual. Um, and, you know, I think uh, it'll be interesting. He said the top leaks a little bit. Okay. So I wonder how much a little bit is, because it's been raining rainy. these last couple days, so yeah. we're going to find out. Yeah, we're going to find out, but uh, kind of, you know, this, this generation of Mustang came right after the cool Fox body Mustang, uh, and before the, what was the, what was the facelifted one called? Uh, uh, I don't know if SN95 was the entire generation of this Mustang, or if that was just the facelift. You'll have to let us know down in the comments yeah, which, below. Which I think came in like 99. Right. So th this is... For lack of a more subtle way of saying it, your grandma's Mustang GT. Yeah, big time. <laughs> All right, well, let's go look at this thing uh, and see if it's uh, worth buying. And then if we get this, we'll have the three convertibles. This is the last one, right? We've got the uh, Nissan Z convertible representing the Japanese convertible in the 90s. We've got uh, the Mercedes-Benz 500 SL representing the Germans, and this would represent the American entry. Uh, and then when we film the series, which, like I said, we're calling from... Um, Stud, stud to, to dud, dud because yeah. back in the day these were studly cars well maybe this one wasn't <laughs> but you know what i'm saying uh, close enough and right now they're kind of dudley cars uh we're gonna have a series of different tests and uh challenges uh that myself andre and nathan are gonna have to partake in to see which one actually is the best one What do you think, Case? I mean, the uh, body looks really clean on it. Yeah, it does look really clean. Maybe we can get, the, get Joe to pull it out. Yeah. Can we pull it out? Can you pull it out? Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Sounds okay. Yeah, sounds okay. Start it up right away. It's like just a, maybe a cold air intake over yeah, here. Yeah, was this aftermarket? 
I put this in myself. Okay. So it's just, it's it's a just a cold yeah. air intake, yeah. Okay. And then it looks like this is probably aftermarket as well. As I don't race. know. This one's already on there. Okay. Maybe that could be factory. Who knows? Who knows? Yeah. Somebody in the comments knows. Yeah, I'm sure somebody yeah watching this video. Let's turn it off for a second so I can I can talk to you. It's not so loud. There's something going out of the paint. Yeah, so something's going out of the paint, huh? Something happened here, Joe? You know? Mm -hmm. Do you know what, what, what that's about? Oh, yeah. This was. This has been like this for a little bit. You think it was repainted, or you think that just the, the paint just like? You could... I don't know if it's weather or not. Yeah. Shall we pop the, let's pop the trunk, see what that looks like. And does this work? Does this retract? Is it, is it, uh, yeah, yeah. Is it manual or is it automatic? It's uh, automatic. All right, you, want, you want to pull it back? It's just this button right here. Okay. Well, you got to probably... There are two levers right here. Yep. Yeah. And then you just pop yeah. like that. Yeah, top looks like it's in good shape. Yeah, top looks like it's in good shape. You said it leaks a little bit. Yeah, yeah, kind of at the corners where the swear marks are. Okay. Yep. Well, that, that works I've out. never been out in the rain, but in a car wash, I could tell. You could, well, they're not supposed to go in a car wash. Yeah, I guess yeah. with the pressure, it's yeah. understandable. It's more like spraying, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We pop the, the trunk, let's see what that looks like. Oh, you got oh, a cover. cover for it. That's nice. cool, yeah. I think this goes on. Over the top, yeah. Yeah. Here, we got. That's the spare right there. A spare tire right here. This looks like it's never been apart. That looks, that's good. Yeah, it's yeah. just a donut. Yeah, it's just regular. So that's a cover for it. Nice. What do you think, Case? Yeah, I mean, overall, it's pretty clean. And really, the only thing is the uh, the paint on the hood. You know, the leather seems like it's in pretty good shape. Yeah, the interior is as good as you could expect a car of this vintage that's actually used. Do you think used. this was factory, the, Case? This, this, the, the fake was. wood? Yeah. It's yeah. like an addition or something. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Yeah, because it does have the Ford logo on it, like you saw. Yeah, but but it's pretty tacky. Sorry, yeah. I don't mean to be not <laughs> trying, but it, it's pretty like 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 not good '90s. <laughs> yeah, it is. A, it's a very period correct feature. Yeah, if it was today, it'd be like fake carbon fiber. You know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> is there uh, anything on the car you know of that doesn't work? Yeah, does everything work? Does... You want to try the AC? I mean, it. Yeah, try the AC. Up. Yeah, see if it works. Yeah. Turn right. it up a little bit. It feels cold. Yeah, it's, it's working. You can tell. It works. Yeah. Yeah, it works. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right, let's take it for a ride. Yeah. Is there a, a always manual there? Let's, I always like getting uh, yeah, out of manual. Yeah, let's find out. Let's find out, huh? This, okay. ha this had that easy access key. Oh, yeah, all the manuals. Look at that. Yeah. Now, not our favorite thing, but it does have the aftermarket head unit. Yeah. And that comes with a remote, wahoo. as per usual. Yeah, wahoo. Yeah, yeah. You want to love that? It does have an owner's manual. That's good. Yeah. Always good to have an owner's manual. Somebody paid attention enough to keep it, which is a plus. Yeah. I think this is kind of funny. See this? You can see body color underneath the uh, parking brake. <laughs> 90s build quality is always a favorite. All right. So 76,791 miles. Yeah, it'll be worth watching as we drive. Just make sure that the odometer works. First, first seems good. It might be a lockout. Second's good. Seems strong. Yeah, motor seems happy. Yeah. It's a very small car, actually. I'm just yeah, surprised. Yeah, it's, it's not big. No, it's I mean, not we're big. scooted forward a little bit yeah. so we don't absolutely crush so that's the Ford. And... A little yeah. cow shake. <laughs> <laughs> brakes are a little soft. All yeah. these cars, the brakes are always squishy. Yeah. Yeah, it takes a good amount of effort into the pedal with older American cars in general to uh, get them to actually yeah. stop. It's pretty solid. Yeah, no squeaks and rattles, no. nothing too strange. I yeah. mean, the car seems pretty happy. Yeah. Yeah, the worst thing about this car is is, <laughs> is that. <laughs> yeah, the very period correct, very cheesy wood dash kit. Yeah. 
but otherwise, you know, power steering works, brakes work. Uh, terrible cowl shake. <laughs> you can just tell it's not the. And I think yeah. I think whoever had this tried to kind of make it a little bit more butch uh, with with those headlight covers. You know, He's, right? You know, I think that just ends. Oh, I think this ends too. Oh, I'll just turn yeah. around. I'll just go around. Look at that. That's interesting. Look at that house. Holy cow! That's in the ground. Huh. It's a hobbit house. <laughs> it drives well. Yeah. So I mean, for, really. For what is thirty-year-old car? Well, not quite. But twenty-five years old, right? In terms of condition, the worst thing about it is the paint on the hood. Yeah. The not hood, in fantastic yeah. shape. Yeah. Um, otherwise, I mean, the car looks like it's been pretty well taken care of. Uh, yeah. I don't. I don't think there's anything glaringly wrong with it. Yeah. I don't think there's anything glaringly right with it either. But. <laughs> Yeah, well, would it be the car that uh, would get me up out of bed and over to the bank? I mean, personally, probably not, but uh, at the end of the day, I mean, this is a video series that has a little bit of an expiration date because Colorado is not California. It's not convertible weather year-round, so if we're going to do this thing at a certain point, we, we got to do it. And it is a GT. Yeah, it so, is. So we do have the V8. We do, and it makes a V8 kind of noise. So how much do you think I should offer this guy? I feel like 9,500 is high. Yeah. Uh, I feel like 9,500 is high for this generation of Mustang, I think so even too. in really yeah. good condition. Yeah. And like we saw with the paint on the hood, it's it's not perfect. Uh, and this isn't necessarily the most desirable configuration. So I don't know. I mean, I I feel like 7,500 is is a good bit lower than what he's probably going to want to take that would be what i would want to offer but it might have to be a little back and forth to find a number that everyone's happy with did we offer him eight i think 7500 might be too low it might be too low yeah, yeah that's a but, lot that's a lot off of but i mean that's what the that's what kbb says it's worth yeah but uh but i think i'd be comfortable at eight eight yeah and that will give us two thousand dollars to to, you know, turbocharge it or yeah. do whatever we decide to do. I, I'm afraid when you pull off that bra, oops, it's going to be it's going to be pretty messy. Yeah, it's, I mean, underneath there's a good amount of dirt, which over time, you dirt, know, that dirt, starts yeah. to scuff the paint. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm a little worried about that. I mean, I I peeked under the bra a little bit, and it doesn't look too bad. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's. I mean, those old leather bras are just not my favorite thing. Yeah. Not my favorite kind of bra. No, I used to put those on my cars. I was pretty stupid. I, w <laughs> I wouldn't do that again. So would you would you take eight for it? Um, lowest I'll go is eighty five hundred. Eighty five hundred. What do you think, Case? Yeah, I mean it's. I know the market has been really high for used cars, um, and it's definitely not really what it was. Um, 8,500. I don't know. It's kind of a toss up. Well, I mean, we have to do the series, right? And yeah. We're, we're, I mean, we've, got, we, we've got the same problem you've got, right? In about two months, Labor Day is here, and then it's going to be much harder to sell this. But for us, it's going to be much harder to film this because we <laughs> want to do it. We want to do the series before the weather turns. Um, so yeah, I'll do 85. Yeah, congratulations. Cool. You just sold us a Mustang. Right <laughs> or congratulations, we just bought a Mustang. Um, yeah, thank you very much. I really appreciate you selling it to us. Sweet. Sounds cool. Yeah, thank you, Joe. I really appreciate it. All right. Yeah. yeah thank you. Yeah, yeah, thanks again, man. Yeah, thanks, dude. Yeah. yeah. Appreciate it. Appreciate it, yeah.